Hi, welcome. Welcome to this uh, Aperture lesson. I'm going to be doing a screen recording of uh, a bunch of photographs showing the different f-stops, the different apertures that I've, I've used and explaining why I've used those, those apertures in the different photographs. This is part of my online photographic course. You have a look, you'll see the link below. And it's an end, end video of the, the section that I have covered in that online course on aperture and aperture settings and depth of field. Enjoy. Hi, welcome. If you're looking at this section of the, of the course, it means that you have just finished the, the section on aperture. I'm really grateful for how far you've gone so far and well done on, on what you've achieved. Excellent going. In front of us, we see a whole lot of photographs uh, that I have selected. Um, I'm going to go over each, uh, one for each of the photographs and show you what the, the different aperture settings are, what the different F stops are, and explain why I've used these different uh, aperture settings on each photograph. In front of us right now, we have got the, the photographs which are at uh, F1.8. Keep in mind that F1.8 is a very, very small F number, which means that it's a very, very large aperture. So it's allowing in a lot of light. And what that also means is that it's creating a very, very short depth of field. And what we mean by that, if I look at this first photograph over here, you're going to see this line. I've done this in order to show you what we have got here. And you see this line that is in focus over here. So there isn't a very strong focal point or anything in this photograph, but you've got that line, that band, uh, that plane, and that is your focal plane. As you can see there, using f1.8, very, very narrow depth of field. Everything in front of it over here is out of focus. Everything behind is out of focus, and it's just that thin band that is in focus. And the very, very shallow depth of field is also creating the bokeh on the, the lights in the background in this early morning shot of, of Cork Bay. So just keep that in mind whenever you're using any uh, variant of, of depth of field, that that is the band that in front and behind is going to be out of focus. Here's a photograph that I've taken of some flower arrangements at, uh, at an event. And what I've done here is I've used a, a very, very wide aperture created this nice bokeh of the stage lights in the background and it's also allowed me under the the lights that are in this particular room it's allowed me to use my, take the photograph without using flash so up here it's my favorite 85 millimeter lens um, I've put an ISO of uh, 2000 up there and it's allowed me to get a, a speed of f 160th sorry a speed of 1 over 160th with a f number of 1.8 so that focuses in on the the front flowers at the back and puts everything in the background out of focus. Another one, same, uh, I presume the same event, using a Strelitzia flower, photographing on the front of the flower, stage lights giving a nicer uh, bouquet at the back. And I quite like the lineup of the, the flower with the lights giving this effect in the background. Okay, likewise at, a, at an event, uh, focusing in on the bottle so you can read the label on the bottle, and again, pretty lights at the background. Just a little tip, whenever you are photographing at an event or at a wedding and there's a dancing involved, what have you, always try and get lights in the background rather than photographing. If you try and imagine this photograph, if it was a black background with no lights, it would be a, a pretty dull photograph. So always try and get some lights in the background just to give your, your photographs a bit more character. Doesn't only have to be static things such as bottles and flowers to photograph at a very low uh, F number at a very very big aperture. Here I've photographed the guy playing his trumpet. And the same thing with a low F number using the natural light and blurring out the background. Quite busy with the, the cables for his microphones and stuff. So the idea is to focus in, in this case, focus in on his hand playing his instrument. You can do sunrises, uh, sunsets uh, at a very, very low F number. It's not ideal in this case. Um, I call this photograph my hand of God and the, the flowers and shadow, uh, the, the clouds and, and shadows in the sky were given out this almost looks like a hand up in the sky. But if you look at the mountains in the background here, they're, they're pretty soft. So F1.8, you can get good effects um, with the, the pool water in the front here being out of focus and are obviously focused in on the uh, on the cloud up at the top there. So you can do F1.8 or a low F number. 
for, for sunrise sunsets, but just uh, be careful of where you are focusing. Maybe in this case, maybe if I'd focus on the mountains, it might have been given a better effect. And of course, photographing people at a, at a very low F number. I love it because it gives a, it blows out the background, really separates your, your subjects from the, uh, the folk in the background. Be very, very careful. You learned in the, the section up above that your depth of field also depends on the distance away from your subject. So make sure that you're at a reasonable distance away from your subject so you don't get too, too great a depth of field. What I mean by that, you don't want to be focusing in on the lady's eye and then her nose or her chin is out of focus. You want to be at a good distance away from the person in order to, to get all of that in focus. If that isn't possible, then you need to push your, your F number up a bit, make your, your aperture a little bit smaller. What I mean by that is make your F number bigger, so go up to F3.5 or F4. And still with the idea of blurring out the backgrounds. Likewise with this gentleman, um, photographing and focusing on his eyes, making sure that the background is all blurred out. Just a little tip when people are wearing glasses, um, sometimes you might focus and try and focus on the person's eye, but the camera actually picks up the glass. And if you're using a very, very small F number, what's going to happen is that, and I don't know if it's happening in this case, in this case his eye is pretty sharp, but what might happen is that the the camera picks up the focus on the actual glass rim or on the glass of the of the spectacles and in which case the person's eyes are actually out of focus. Sometimes what I do there is to then just focus maybe a little bit above the glasses, uh, maybe focus on the eye or maybe just off there on the, the side just to make sure that the eyes are in focus. And that's something that I've learned over the years with through experience. Here I've used the the depth of field to, to advantage at a, a trade show. So the lady is looking at some uh, stock that is on display at the trade show and I focus in on her whereas everything else is out of focus and she then becomes the, the central point. Also using natural light and getting some bokeh and some fairy lights that are in the trees at the background there. Um, ISO of 2000, so quite a high ISO and which actually allowed me to photograph at 1 over 2000 for the second. So very, very uh, fast shutter speed as well. I could have, in hindsight and looking at the, the numbers now, I could have brought my ISO down, in which case I would have brought my, uh, my shutter speed down as well. All right, we mentioned earlier on about uh, distance away from your subject and uh, how that affects your depth of field. So here I've used a f1.8 again, which normally would give you a very, very narrow depth of field. The folk up here, they are very, very far away from where I was photographing, so it's given a greater depth of field because of that distance away from the subject. The backstory to this is that uh, a couple arrived on the beach late evening uh, for a picnic. He took his, his girlfriend, it was his girlfriend at the, that stage, took her all the way up in sort of the, the mountainside here, and where I'm photographing, I've got the sea to over my left shoulder. And up on the rock, he didn't quite get down on one knee as far as I remember, but up on the rock, he proposed to her and, and offered her a ring and his hand in marriage. Um, I was down at the bottom, I saw what was happening, so I captured it and shared the photographs with him afterwards. When it comes to bokeh, the reason why I've shared this photograph is that you need to have something strong in your photograph besides just the bokeh. In this case, the, the, the obvious focal object is a flower, but it's not a very strong flower. Maybe it should have been a little bit further up or more light on the flower. It sort of blends into the background too much. So just be careful of that. You can get really pretty photographs with lots of bokeh in it, but there's nothing else in the photograph. And often you want something in there, a good subject, some good subject matter to be in the photograph uh, with the bokeh as the, at the background adding to the photograph. Photographs of horses, uh, again, horses and children at 1.8 against the sky gives you a nice effect. Again, I'm a fair distance away from the from my daughter on her pony, so it uh, gets all of the, the pony and, the daughter, and my daughter in focus, and at the background, the sky goes out into a, a blurry effect. What I'm saying with the, these photographs is don't be shy, don't be scared of using a low F number. 
Um, it took me a while, and I speak for myself here, yeah, it took me a long time to actually get comfortable. I often felt like, oh, the risk was too high. What if I take a, a photograph of a person and they're out of focus or they are focused on the eye and the nose is out of focus? Uh, the beauty with digital is that you can test, take a couple of photographs at a very low F number and then take a couple more to, at a higher F number. Okay. Always keep in mind, uh, the, I suppose I could call it a rule, the rule of Fs. The bigger the F number, the bigger the depth of field. And the smaller the F number, the smaller of the depth of field. So that's it for 1.8. We now go on to F1.2. Uh, sorry, not F1.2. We now go on to F2.8 and see a couple of photographs that we've got from there. All right, so now I've chosen a couple of photographs, uh, eight photographs in all. And these are all taken at f2.8. A lot of these would have been taken with my uh, 70 to 200 mil lens at f2.8, which is just an absolute great lens, really good for doing portrait shoots, um, very good for, for just getting really good quality. It's a, a Canon f2.8 uh, L lens. So first photograph is a, a musician that's on stage, and I focused in on him using the stage, light, stage lights only. And it blurs out the background. There's a background singer there, and it blurs out the background, which highlights him as the as the subject matter. Um, ISO very high ISO in this case of uh, 3200. Um, I'm using a Canon 5D Mark III, which allows me to push the ISO up and still get a really good good photograph. I was at f 2.8. This one is taken with my 24 to 70 mm lens, where I've rested it on the edge of a pool. And these are the slats leading into a swimming pool, taking it uh, uh, in the evening, the blue hour of the evening, and getting the idea of these lines leading into the photograph, the reflections, um, and the building in the background. Uh, it's at a resort I was staying in in Portugal, I think it was, in one of my event shoots. That just gets, goes to show if uh, f2.8, and that was a fairly slow shutter speed of 1 over 13, so definitely the camera would have been either on my tripod or I think I might have rested it on the, on the ground next to the pool in this shot. Using my two 70 to 200 mm lens here at 70 millimeters for a portrait shot, um, which blurs out the background. Those was, uh, this was taken in the reception area of the hotel, some bright TV sets at the background there, but they blurred out, so it's much a little bit of a distraction, they're not too much of a distraction, and it highlights the, the subject in the actual photograph. Okay, in this one I've used the uh, 52 mm so probably using my 24 to 70 mm lens. I would have been pretty close to, uh, to this uh, camera over here. And what I've done here is I've used a very low uh, F number, giving me a, a short depth of field focusing in on the camera over here. And it gives you a story of the lady doing a selfie or she was photographing something else here. Yeah, that camera's facing this way. And it just gives you an idea of the camera and with herself over there. Maybe after this I might have taken a photograph of her and had her in focus with the, the camera out of focus just to give it a different aspect, different perspective to, to the photograph. Okay, also an event uh, capturing from uh, 200 millimeters, so a nice distance away. Uh, the delegates don't know that I'm even photographing them. Have, they're having a chat and a, and a good laugh and the short depth of field focuses into the subject matter there. ISO 4000, so a high ISO, and I was using just the available light and the speed of 1 over 200. Keep in mind, if you look over here, that I'm photographing a 200 millimeter, and I'm taking the, the speed at 1 over 200. Try and match that speed or make it greater than your actual focal length to get rid of any possible camera shake. So if you're using a 400 mm lens, then your speed should be at least... 1 over 400th of a second. I know we're talking aperture here, but uh, that's just a little side message regarding shutter speed and camera shape. All right, that was a visit to Robben Island where Nelson Mandela was in prison for, for 27 years and using the 35mm, so it's about 24 to 70mm lens that I'm using over here. And I uh, focused in on the sign over here and giving the barbed wire to add to the story and you can see how the, the depth of field fades away into and gives you um, that uh, depth of field, that out of focus section over there. I've just noticed as I look on this, a little spot over here, it might be a little dust spot, 
and very simple in Lightroom. I need to just remove that off and it's, and it's gone just to clean up the photograph a little bit. <coughs> Show jump in, you can photograph, um, often use F2.8 for, for photographing uh, show jumping. Um, you're at a, a, a very a good distance away from the subject. So the idea there, even here you can see at f2.8, the background is not that blurred out because I'm a, a fair distance away and it's giving me that, that greater depth of field. So I think when I first started photographing uh, horse riders and what have you, I was using maybe f5, f5.6, worried that I, I'd miss the, uh, the focal point of the horse and the rider together. And now I've come down to f2.8, provided I'm standing a fair distance away from, from the riders. So from here we'll go on to f4.5. I've selected a couple of photographs there as well. Right, so f4.5, I've chosen five photographs over here. And you can see in this case, it's mostly people in the, the photographs. So as my f numbers start going up, so uh, event photographs, birthday parties, I start using that uh, the, the bigger f number for, or the middle, not the bigger, I'd say the middle f numbers, f4.5, f5 for people, especially if we're starting to do groups of people. This particular one, it's a gentleman reading a, a map and it gives you a bit of a story. He's a visitor to Cape Town and you can see Table Mountain in the background there, a little bit blurred out. So you can see, you can read the sign still, but it's not too distracting. If I'd focus in on the sign, then our eye would go to that sign and he wouldn't be the subject matter. In this case, I've made him the subject matter reading the, uh, the map and it shows that he's discussing some tours and transfers uh, going on a visit around Cape Town somewhere along the way. F4.5. Okay, birthday party, people smiling, laughing in the background, but not too distracting, whereas the, uh, the birthday girl is, is in the front, and that's my, my focal, focal point here. So when it comes to, again, horses, I now have my daughter on her pony, getting congratulated by the, the judge or the event organizer, and here, if I would photographed this at f1.8 or f2.8, I might have had my daughter in focus and the pony's face might have been out of focus and the lady over here might have been out of focus. So that extra bit of depth of field just gives you that extra depth so if you can get all of them in focus. You can see the poles in the background, they are out of focus as with the mountains, whereas the three of them are in focus. All right, a baboon line on a fence. So... There you can see, let's see what I used here, 105 millimeters, so that would have been my 70 to 200 mil lens. Fairly close to the baboon, where I photographed this at 105, and it's given a, a much deeper depth of field. The bigger your, your lens um, millimeter, the bigger the lens that you're using, the more compressed your, your background is going to be, and also for that in mind, the, the, the foreground as well. Focus then on the baboon, line on the fence, and he's in focus and everything else, I mean, this is a horse and a, a person on a horse in the background, you can't really notice that. Um, and your eye gets comes back to the baboon all the time, because that is our focal point. People standing on stage uh, at f4.5, a little bit distance away, so you can see it's a fairly wide depth of field. I mean, that's only f4.5. I photographed this at 40 millimeters, so I am quite a far distance away, and it's given them all in focus over there. So when you start doing group photographs, depending again how close you are to your subject, you can start doing your, your photographs at f4.5, maybe even less, 3.5 as well. Okay, and that's the, the f4.5 uh, photographs. Let's go up and see what's next. Uh, we go up to jump up to a f number of f8. So here I've got a couple more photographs. Let's have a look what we've got here. So f8. I'm taken with my 200 mil lens, so obviously I'm a distance away here, I'm on another boat and the boats are, are separated, and F8 gives a nice crisp photograph, the backgrounds are, are pretty soft, they're not really that much out of focus, but they're just soft, and it gives a nice uh, story, storyboard of, of what's going on, uh, delegates at a conference going out on a, on a jolly on a boat. Okay, I think it's the same boat, and the F... Uh, the F8 gives us uh, this gentleman in focus as well as these ones here. So they're all in the photograph uh, showing something and they're, they're all in focus. Whereas when you start going to the back here, whereas he's not really part of the, the photograph and he's starting to be out of, out of focus over there. 
Okay, the F8 I've, I've used here for where I've done a, a photo session of a local conference center. I've used a tripod, so you might find it the speed yet, 160, it's not that slow. But I've used, I've had to use the available light in order to get these photographs. Put it on the, on the tripod, uh, 24 millimeters, so it's quite a, a wide angle that I'm using here on my full frame 5D. And I've used the available light at F8 to get everything in focus in the, the, in the building. Sunsets, uh, F8, uh, you can see there that we've been done at 200 mil, so these are in focus over here. This is a little bit out of focus, which adds to the photograph. Um, and the sun, so F8 for, for sunset sunrises, absolutely. And again, this is just a, a guide. This is what I've used. You can use whatever F number you want. Um, there's nothing right or nothing wrong about photography. It really is up to you to develop your style and what you want to do with your photographs. I did a shoot of these vehicles for Mercedes-Benz using F8. I photograph from the front vehicle and the other ones in the background are also in focus. Interesting over here, the sun, if you look at the shadows, was shining through this way and I've got a little bit of flare that has come through onto my lens. Again, in Lightroom, pretty easy to get rid of that. Um, you can just especially with it being on a flat surface such as, as the road. And boom, those, those bits are gone and not distracting. Okay, F8, uh, 70 mil also with my 70 to 200 millimeter. I'm fairly close to these Bay Maries over here. Uh, focus in on them, you can see the ones at the back and the stands at the background have now gone out of focus. So that just brings us into the, uh, the setting of the uh, lunch that's about to happen at this particular event, uh, focusing in on those Bay Maries. Very, very wide angle. Here I've used my 16 to 35 millimeter lens at 16 millimeters at f8, uh, one hundredth of a second, so a bit of a just after sunrise there, the sky's lost a bit of uh, cloud. But uh, at a very wide angle, pretty much everything around here is in focus. A little bit out of uh, the depth in the, the front here, but otherwise almost to infinity, it is all in, in focus. So the wider you go with your lens, the deeper your depth of field also gets. Okay, I often use the uh, F8 for, for table settings uh, to try and get the, the table setting from front through to the, the back in focus. And there we've used that. When you start going into the background there, you start losing your depth of field. So F8 is very much in the, the middle of the F numbers. I think we start at F1.8 and we're going to go up to F32. Uh, F8 is starting to be in the middle of, of the aperture range. Okay, that's the F8 ones done. Let's go on to F11. So we're skipping. There are other F numbers, uh, aperture settings in between these. There's uh, 6.3, 6.8, 7.2. Uh, there's F10. And different lenses have different F numbers. So I'm do, I've just gone through and selected a few. I haven't taken each and every one that my lenses offer. Right, so F11. So here we're talking about much deeper depths of field. So this is going to be used mostly for... Um, for landscape type photography, you're going to see over here I've got a bit of product photography as well. And it also depends on how much light is, is available, as with all, all photographs. On this one here, that's a photograph taken of the, the Garb in Portugal when I was uh, on an event over there. So a nice deep depth of field of F11, getting everything in focus from that point all the way across, everything is in focus. It's taken obviously in the afternoon, I think, pretty uh, lots of light around, um, a low ISO of 320, and I still managed to get a speed of 1 640th of a second. Okay, but uh, used this in a F11 for another room where I photographed the, uh, what the room looks like. They wanted it for the event, uh, for their marketing. So F11 allows me to get everything in focus at the background into the foreground of the table. And that's using natural light, the neon lights above, and it's allowed me a speed of only one eighth of a second. There are no moving parts in here, so I've taken, put the camera on the tripod, and that's been absolutely fine. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, 170 millimeter, I photographed uh, in on my daughter in the, the sunset, so she's got a very sharp. Uh, in focus silhouette with a surfboard. The bird in the background here is out of focus. So at F11, you still get uh, some depth of feed, 
field. Again, this is because I'm standing fairly close to my daughter, the bird at the background is compressed. So again, the bigger your lens, the longer your lens, the more the compression is going to happen in the background. Product photography, um, taken from top down at uh, 50 millimeters. So I might have been using my small 50 millimeter uh, macro lens here. And there I have uh, done F11 to get from the top of the, um, of the jug all the way down to the plate at the bottom in focus. Product photography, often you photograph photographing very, very close to the subject, so be very careful of your F numbers there. You might think, well, I'm using a F11 and you go very close to the jug, for instance, and the background uh, product actually goes out of focus. Always do a test shot, check it on your playback screen uh, to make sure you're getting what you want. In cases like this, you can even, even do tethered photography where you uh, have a cable from your camera to your notebook and you can have a look at it on the big screen as well. All right, early morning shot at Cork Bay. Uh, this was actually, no, I lie, this was a late, late evening shot at, at Cork Bay. Pretty much lost the, the blue hour. You can see the sky hasn't got any of the, the blue left in it. But at F11, uh, 25 seconds. So definitely use the tripod here and left the shutters, uh, shutters open for 25 seconds, which gives you this uh, interesting starburst on the, on the uh, light shining into the lens. So pretty, pretty at 25 seconds, it also blurs out the water. It was a very calm evening that evening as well. But it gives a bit of a misty effect and all these beautiful reflections of the, the lights it's in a little place called Cork Bay in Cape Town. All right, so here I was uh, photographing a, a party in a, a town in, in Cape Town called Camps Bay. Uh, mountains at the backyard leading up to Table Mountain. And there I've done it at F11. So I've photographed where I wanted the swimming pool and the setting on the side here together with the beach and the, the mountain in the background all in, in focus. So we've got a very deep depth of field there. There I've done a very close up, 21 millimeters. So I've put the, the camera onto a tripod very low down on the ground. I probably have used the trigger here. I have a, a Myops trigger, which allows me to set my camera up and then to stand back and to photograph uh, just by using my camera to, to fire the camera using my, my phone. And uh, probably did that at F, uh, F11 and one two thousandth of a second. Right, so 800, so bright sunlight and very close that I am safe. Uh, the camera wouldn't be safe if, uh, if the horse had hit those poles. Another one, F11, nice deep um, uh, depth of field there of birds at sunrise on a, a river close to Cape Town. These two have look quite interesting the way they, one's hiding behind the other there. Morning mist and a, a nice uh, Really deep depth of field. If 200 millimeters, so I've used my 70 to 200 millimeter lens there. That's of a, a building. It's actually a restaurant uh, in in Portugal. Ah, oh, lie, not in Portugal. This is in Crete, in uh, in Greece, and uh, gives you nice depth. Uh, just lovely architecture and the palm trees and that, and the F11 giving you a nice, nice depth there. I took this at one sixth of a second, and I remember uh, either resting it on a wall. It was quite low. I wanted the F11. I didn't push my eyes up too high, so that brought the speed down pretty low. Um, and I think I might have rested it on a wall. I otherwise, just made sure that I was standing very, very still to get the photograph. Group photographs. F11 is always good for, for group photographs. You've got quite a bit of depth over here from these people in the front to the people at the back. So um, to be on the safe side, I've gone for F11 to give me extra depth there. When it comes to group photographs, the worst thing that you can do is to focus in on a fr front person and the person at the back is out of focus. Um, as a professional photographer and uh, selling photographs off to clients, I can't give them a, a photograph of their group of delegates and some of them are out of focus in the group photograph. Always just make sure on that and the beauty is you can push your eyes up. In this case it was very bright when the, when the clouds uh, gave us a bit of a break so I use ISO 320 then. And that's the F11 photographs. So we're going uh, to higher and higher F numbers. The, the aperture is getting smaller and smaller 
and the depth of field is getting bigger and bigger. Let's go on to F16. I've got eight photographs to show you here. So the first one there, F16, we really are talking about landscape photography here. And that's a, a landscape of what we call the tablecloth coming over Table Mountain. Underneath this cloud is Table Mountain leading up here, the big flat mountain at the top here. This is called Lion's Head, maybe the second most famous mountain in, in Cape Town. So at F16, um, deep depth of field, I converted this into black and white to give off the contrast between the clouds and the, the dark mountains. And the reason I was there is to get a group photograph. So there I've used the F16, the mountain, you can just see it peeping out of the back there. They're pretty much in focus with the uh, with F16. Uh, gives you a fairly deep depth of field, especially at 35 millimeters. So I've used my 16 to 35 millimeter at 35 millimeter on my lens to give me that deep depth of field. In a photograph of a setting, uh, a resort at one of the uh, places I did an event, so F16 shows everything in focus in the swimming pool as well as the hotel, the palm trees in the background all in focus. Also product photography, depend, depending on the available light, um, you can start pushing up to F16 to once again get everything in focus. And we photograph in this on a white background, so it doesn't matter if the, the background, if there's lots of depth of field. The important is to get all the bits in, in, in focus in, in the bowl. You go very, very close and focus on the front here, it is possible that the back goes out of focus. Yeah, I've used a flash uh, F16. I'm standing pretty close, uh, 70 millimeter to the, the person getting the photograph, uh, which has blurred out Cape Town Stadium, the Atlantic Ocean in the background. And I use the flash here on the side to just light up the, the subject a little bit. And also what has happened is that the subject is standing in fairly dark shadow in a building so I'm competing with the dark shadow in the front against the bright sunlight at the back and using the, uh, the, sh uh, the flash is just fold in that light over there. Using the F16 has allowed me to use the ambient light and not blow out or have that overexposed in any way. Okay, also a deep depth of field taken down at Cape Point uh, on the Cape Peninsula, giving a deep depth of field, the clouds and the shadows and the mountains all the way through there. That's at 24 millimeters, so that would have been my 24 to 70 millimeter lens that I've used in this case. Also, the boat has got the lens, so at F16, it's giving everything into, into focus and showing uh, the boat and the, uh, the surrounding the settings. This was taken also last year on a event in Crete, 2019. Deep depth of field, um, looking over a beach in Cape Town, uh, gives you a really good landscape uh, photograph, gives you a nice color into the sky and deep depth of field from the grass in the front all the way through the beach to the waves. F16 at 24 millimeter. Bright sunlight day, so ISO of 250 and it's given me a speed of one over 250. An interesting scene, those figures over there, it's something called the the rule, the sunny rule of 16, the sunny F16 rule. And what it means is on a sunny day, you can put your f-stop at F16, then whatever your ISO is, in this case ISO 250, that is what you set your speed at. Okay, so sunny F16 rule, we set our ISO at 250, our aperture we have started with that at F16, and then you can match your speed with your ISO, and you'll get a well exposed photograph. It's only F16 rule. And that's it for F16. Now we go on down to F22. So we're getting a fairly, fairly uh, small hole, small aperture in the lens, which is giving us a much, much bigger depth of field. And of course, it's meaning that there's less and less light coming through the lens uh, to, to the shutter. So we need to balance those out. So this one over here, the first one that we, we have over here is a gentleman speaking on his telephone, maybe doing a, a, a FaceTime video showing the, the landscape we were in. And I photographed, I filled him in a little bit with a flash, but it gives the mountains in the, the background at F22 that keeps them in, um, in focus and also allows me to play with the ambient light 
just find that with a higher F number, if I'm using flash, that allows me to, to keep the ambient light still, the, the exposure still correct when I'm photographing this gentleman who was in the shadow versus the, the fairly harsh sunlight in the background. F22, it's a landscape uh, photograph that's uh, the place called the Trans Sky, which is on the east coast of South Africa. Um, beautiful, beautiful area. We often have cows on the beach, grassland right down onto the beach and the sea in the rugged, rugged coastline. So F16 at 85 millimeter. Um, it's given a, a nice uh, depth of field there. Sorry, not F16. I apologize for that. That's, we're on F22 now. Okay, photographing into the sun, so the sun is behind the mist, so only an ISO of 160, uh, F22, and I photographed that at 1 over 2,500th of a second. So I've gone for the uh, silhouette here, so I've underexposed it, which has made the sun a little bit darker, the misty effect, the harbour wall and the lighthouse uh, in silhouette. Another one uh, taken in Greece, very, very wide depth of field, 24 millimeter. Uh, F22, lots of light, ISO 640 and 1 500th of a second. And that's giving us a, a really deep depth of field and showing us the boats in the surrounding area with the, the houses on the, the hillside. When you photograph at a very high F, F number, a very, very small aperture, you get this effect of star bursts coming through when you photograph into direct sun. I wouldn't Recommend photographing directly into the sun. So you have gone through a, a tree and the uh, sun is shining through the leaves of the tree and it gives you this very interesting starburst effect when you start photographing at F22, F20, F25, 29, thereabouts. This gives you, it's a, it's a wonderful effect that you can play with. Yeah, as well, I photographed using a flash um, and to balance the ambient light with the, the flash in the foreground. And these two hostesses, they were at an event on top of Table Mountain, actually, right up on the top of Table Mountain in this case. Okay, F22 in this case has given me the opportunity to use a slower, a slower speed. And the slower speed has allowed me to blur out the rotors of the helicopter. So that's at 1 to 50th of a second, so it's not that slow, but it's slow enough to blur the, the rotors. Um, if you get into photographing... Uh, planes, if you photograph in a, a jet flying past and you want a very, very fast uh, shutter speed so that uh, the jet is frozen in motion, but if you photograph in helicopters, you want to see the rotors actually moving. Otherwise, it looks very static and it looks like the helicopter is about to fall out of the sky. And it also gives you a good idea that uh, you can see the back rotor here as well, that at uh, 2 50th of a second, that's the effect that you get. Yeah, and there I photographed uh, at 200 millimeters, so I've zoomed right into the, uh, to the sun. And what I've done is I've actually focused on the trees in the front here, which has given me this little bit out of focus area at the back of the, um, of the sunset. And that's at f22. So photographing straight into the, the sun, a lot of light still has allowed me to photograph that at 1 200th of a second in a very low ISO of 1 125. Hey, that's our F22 setup, and though I've got one other one to do here. I'll go from F22 up to F32. And going through my photographs, there's not many opportunities that I get to photograph at F32. It's a really, really tiny aperture, and it gives a very, very wide depth of field. And often I do this, as you're going to see in, the, uh, in this photograph. Um, I photographed at F32 in order to give me a, a slower shutter speed, in this case 0, uh, 3, 0.3 of a second in ISO 100. So this was a pretty, taken in pretty much broad, well, I don't think it was broad daylight, and it was overcast because I don't see too many shadows here. But it's allowed me to, to photograph at a slow speed in, in daylight conditions. And 0 third of a second F32 in ISO of 100. But this one, I'm looking up at a museum in Cape Town that has got a, a glass roof. So I've here underexposed it a lot so that I've got the exposure right for the windows, but the architecture around the side is, is in silhouette. Also F32, it was a fairly high ISO I was using there, ISO of 1250. Uh, 
one sixtieth of a second. And then another one of the sunset. The sun is fairly high still, lots of clouds around. And using the uh, F32, it's actually allowed me to darken the whole scene a lot. So you can get really good, effective and creative, uh, quite dramatic photographs by using a high ISO. My apologies, by using a high F number, very, very tiny aperture uh, for sunrises and sunsets, which then just minimizes the amount of light coming through your lens and allows you to use a, a faster shutter speed. And that's it for the, the aperture side of things. Um, well done on finishing this section. And the uh, next section we go on to is the full-blown manual, M for manual, uh, where mostly we will be talking about because you now know all about uh, depth of field and shutter speeds. And under the full manual settings, we're going to be talking a lot about uh, changing your exposure, overexposing some photographs and underexposing some photographs. Thanks for your time. Cheers.